it's just yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and call the uh, meeting to order for the Butler Community College Board of Trustees a special board meeting here in the Dankert boardroom at 4 p.m. Um, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Not second. What do you say? All right. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda for this evening. Go ahead. Trustee Good. Yes. Trustee Law. Yes, indeed. Trustee Rhodes. Yes. Trustee Lechtenberg. Yes. Trustee Howell. Yes. Trustee Smith. Yes. Yeah. Julie called and said she got stopped by a train and then her tire light popped on. Oh, shoot. South of Augusta, I'm sure. The train. That's yeah. caught, yeah. caught her one other time, I think, coming up here. So hopefully she gets here okay. So we will go ahead. Uh, the first item on the agenda is to move into the executive session. So I believe there's a motion mm -hmm. on the back of your sheets if somebody would be so inclined. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board recess into executive session to discuss the negotiated agreement pursuant to the open meetings exception for matters relating to employer employee negotiations to include the board, President Kim Kroll, Kent Williams, Bill Rinkenbaugh, Shelley Stoltz, and Lori Winningham for 30 minutes. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to move into executive session. Uh, Laura, if you could call the roll. Trustee Good? Yes. Trustee Law? Yes. Trustee Rhodes? Yes. Trustee Lechtenberg? Yes. Trustee Howell? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. So it's unanimous. Okay. So we will go into executive session and then come back in 30 minutes or less. Yes. Famous, famous, famous last words. Yeah. What's that? Famous, famous last, last words. Famous last words. I'll mark, I'll mark down the time as soon as we
Okay, so we are back out of executive session and I would entertain a motion for adjournment and then we will move into the work session. Uh, anything to read? If not, I uh, move that we uh, adjourn from the uh, meeting. Is there a second? second. We have to have an adjournment yeah. to get so back in. We're going to do session. work session then. Been moved and seconded to adjourn the special board meeting. Uh, Laura, if you could call the roll. Trustee Good? Yes. Trustee Law? Yes. Trustee Rhodes? Yes. Trustee Lechtenberg? Yes. Trustee Winslow? Yes. Trustee Howell? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Unanimous. We are adjourned. Okay. And so we will just jump immediately into the work session, which is uh, yeah. really kind of a budget update right. um, primarily. And right. Dr. Crawl, I'll let you jump in. Yeah. Um, you, you, Laura printed hard copies for you too. It's posted in SharePoint as well. Um, we wanted to just give an update um, really based on the information that was presented to you in um, May on the 17th. We've got a few uh, numbers that are updated. Uh, and so let me just run through, let me run through this document that's in front of you. Uh, Kent is gonna show when we get to the, the financial stuff, Kent will go ahead and show uh, the finance stuff. but. Give you an opportunity to you know ask some questions and see kind of where we're at so that first page if you remember right just showed the different categories of the federal stimulus funds that came to us the cares the herf one funds the carissa that came to us uh herf two and then um the herf three funds the american rescue plan the cares was all spent you know, by summer, essentially, it had to be distributed. So that money, all half of that went direct aid to students and half was used for institutional needs. And they were pretty direct in how that had to be used for technology. It had to be used for um, um, uh, disinfecting kinds of things and could also be used for um, some changes related to um, delivery of courses and, and um, delivery of instruction. So. That money's gone. There's a little bit of the Carissa money that's left that hasn't been obligated, and the um, the ARP, uh, the HERF three funds are still, um, you know, we're still designating those and and um, working through those. But there's a time frame within which all of that has to be spent. Um, on page two, we talked with you about the critical needs and the use of the HERF funds. These are all one-time funds, um, and it gives us an opportunity to. Uh, do some things that we haven't been able to do in the past to set some money aside for um, address some deferred maintenance issue to issues to um, uh, we're setting aside some money to reserve for the health insurance self-funding uh, we want to be able to uh, give folks the service extraordinary service recognition awards we need to address some IT infrastructure uh, we want to set up an innovation fund we want to address some of the property insurance deductible increases and then set some money aside for academic program. Those were kind of our priority areas and we went through those the last time as well. And this information hasn't changed except that at the June board meeting, you went ahead and approved uh, the college moving to be self-funded with uh, an ASO uh, and, and um, that's gonna be provided by Blue Cross Blue Shield and we're gonna use $500,000 of the HERF funds as part of that self fund and then a million dollars from the um, operational budget to uh, create that fund of a uh, uh, million and a half dollars. The deferred maintenance list uh, kind of towards the bottom of two again just gives you a little bit of a narrative with our 55 to 60 year old campus we have a lot of deferred maintenance needs we just do um, and and um, we haven't been in a position to address those in a very strong way over the years. Again, uh, the stimulus money has given us an opportunity to be able to address some of the, some of those in, um, in a more significant way. And then also the ability to, to start to set aside some money um, on an annual basis to continue to be able to address those. Um, the stuff on page three is the same as it was on, uh, you know, when we presented this information to you uh, in May. I don't know that I need to go back through that with you again because nothing's changed there. Again, it just identifies our priority areas and uh, the things that we would like to use some of that stimulus funding for. On page four, where you have the deferred maintenance priority list, um, 
really kind of important for you. I mean, these are the these are where we see the priorities right now, but this can change. It needs to be a flexible and kind of fluid um, list. Um, but we really we we know for sure that we've got to address the electrical infrastructure um, situation, and we really need to address the ADA um, situation. So those those are really um, significant priorities right now. The change to this list compared to what you saw in May is uh, on line 11 and 12. There's some deferred. We we have an agreement with the city uh, for our baseball team to play at McDonald Stadium and for the softball team to play at um, uh, East Park. Uh, and then we've got some deferred maintenance can, that we'll have um, on the, uh, the big stadium, the football stadium with the city and the school district and the college. Uh, we'll have some, some maintenance along the line uh, at that stadium as we work to raise money to replace the turf and, and upgrade the track. So we've added those two items to this list. We don't have any dollar amounts associated with any of that yet. Um, the city's working to get some costs related to the baseball field and the softball field. Um, but but um, through that partnership, <clears throat> I mean, it's a good partnership to be able to use those existing fields. Uh, and um, so once we know some dollar amounts there, we'll, you know, we'll add those to the list. But right, we wanted to add them so that you knew that those um, are also items that we're looking at down the road. Um, nothing that has to be addressed like this year right away, um, probably, um, but um, certainly something that's, you know, some, some of those costs will be coming. Um, we did update the, the amount of the HERF funds at the very bottom and we'll refer to that number. It's a little bit different than what we had uh, last month. When you flip to page five, uh, again, this table is the same as uh, what you looked at a month ago. The format is the same. The numbers are a little bit different. Um, in, in the last month, we've been able to um, firm up some of the contract numbers in a little bit better way um, because those negotiations continue with, you know, with some of the IT contracts and some of those kinds of things. Um, and so some of these numbers are a little bit different, but they refer back to, you'll see the Carissa um, information is on page 13. And so if you go to page 13, the indirect cost of 1.947251, that's the same number as last time. Um, the, the award amount at the top is the same as well, six, um, you know, six million eighty-five thousand one hundred and fifty-nine dollars um, the indirect cost is an administrative allowance that, that we can take from this grant. What's happened with some of the numbers that are here, like the replacement of the chairs and the tables, um, you know, this is, this is replacement of classroom furniture and college furniture in some cases that's, I don't know, Lori, 20, 25 years old, probably, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, and so trying to replace a lot of this so that it's easier to disinfect and take care of. If you look down, and these numbers aren't, uh, or these lines aren't numbered, but like for instance, the Ocelot chatbot, if you look down a couple of lines and the Ex Libris, um, some of these contract numbers were bigger last time around, um, but we can only use the stimulus funds to pay for those, prepay those contracts within the time frame that that um, funding has to be used. So the numbers the last time around were maybe larger because we were looking at prepaying a, a four or five year contract, but because those funds have to be expended within two or three years, that's the only time frame that we can, that's the amount of money that we can use uh, for these contracts. So some of those numbers have, have been reduced a little bit um, because of the length of the, of the uh, time that we have those funds to expand. We also at the bottom have added a couple of things. There's some scheduling software. Um, there's some outreach to students, uh, the PJ Direct outreach to students, phone calls and postcards. There's some facilities reimbursement for COVID expenses. Um, there's some upgrades to contracts with EMSI uh, for use of their analytics that we use internally. Uh, on some of the work that we do. We're also looking at a significant Cisco phone upgrade that was not on the list last time. 
and if I understand correctly, Bill, our our phone systems are out are becoming outdated and unsupport unsupportable. Is that correct? Yeah, Am so I saying that the right way? So if you look at the if you look at the totals on page 13 and go back to page five, the sum of the indirect cost and the sum of the budgeted direct expenditures to date total the five million seven hundred ninety seven thousand uh, dollars uh, nine hundred seven nine five million seven hundred ninety seven thousand eighty one dollars and then what's remaining still that balance is the two eighty eight uh, oh seventy eight on the um, page 14 then identifies the HERF 3 and you'll see there that we're, um, we're going to use those fundings to uh, cover the lost revenue from tuition and fees. There's also an indirect administrative allowance that we can take um, and then there's uh, some revenue loss uh, for other uh, or other um, reimbursed expenditures. So when you look at that total, um, the total of the available indirect funds uh, we have that we, you know, really have things already allocated for is uh, over eight and a half million dollars. And then on page six, again, this is a, a little bit different in a couple of places, a little bit different than what you saw last month, but essentially the same list of information. Uh, the deferred maintenance designated account, that number is a little bit different. We've, we've got a little bit more money committed to deferred maintenance. And then the prepaid IT contracts, that number is different again because the time frame uh, that we can use this money uh, is a little bit shorter. And so we had to reduce that cost. Um, um, and so, you know, so that that's information that you saw last month. It's not changed a whole lot. Um, questions about any of that? Should be kind of familiar to you. What does the administrative allowance mean? Is that just money we can keep in the general fund and use as needed? As the administrative, the, when we take the administrative costs from the grants, that goes, um, what we'll do is set up a designated account so it'll be segregated and we'll identify all of the expenditures that come out. Is that your question? No, what, what will we use that money for? Oh, it's, it's uh, listed here. Okay. Our, our plan for spending total. That one mil, like the one million nine hundred forty-seven thousand. Yeah, six. That's our spending plan. So the one point nine, the, the administrative goes into this total of eight million. Yeah, it's in there. Twenty-one at the bottom here on page six, and then this is a spending plan for all those funds. Yeah. And so a lot of those are going to go into is a lot of that's going to go into designated accounts, so it has to be spent on very specific things. I guess my question is, does, this, does that allow us more freedom if you have administrative allowances? So it's not as specifically spent right. as the other. It gives you a little more freedom with that 32%. Right, because, um, you know, like we want to use some of this for the uh, prepaid IT contracts in, in years beyond the pandemic. We couldn't do that directly because we, cannot, we have to work within the grant period. Other questions? Is there any concerns over any of this? So if we get moving forward, I mean, this is the time to yeah. make what, them aware if there's concerns. I'd be interested what, in anything you're looking, looking at using those dollars for. And getting more information on the Educare renovation. I, I was just gonna. Yeah. I, I was just gonna mention that. I was thinking about that. Um, capital projects team is gonna meet next weekend. Seventh. Seventh. Is that right? Okay. To, to start to look at that. The only thing that we have right now is just some initial plan for what that what that renovation might look like. What do you we would do like, with 
we would like to move public safety over there and criminal justice. There's opportunity to use, uh, uh, create classroom space in there for um, training purposes and public safety folks um, have good relationships with area agencies and stuff and they um, are firm believers that we can bring in outside folks for training and create some revenue stream um, out of that. So um, the capital projects team when we meet will, you know, we'll talk about that and, and look at the, at least the initial design for, you know, what that building would look like. So how did the auction right now, go? I'm sorry, how did the Educare auction go? I, I don't have any idea. I have to find out. We'll have to, we'll have to find out. Um, uh, public safety right now is in the basement of West Hall, which is the residence hall, um, you know, kind of tucked it down in the basement and criminal justice classes are kind of spread out in the building. Yeah. The thought is that um, we might, we might be in a position to uh, potentially move everything out of the 800 building at some point in time and then move that building offline and, you know, move offices and everything out of there. So, so capital projects team, when we meet, typically what, what happens with capital projects is that, you know, we put that information out in front of capital projects first, and then they'll bring an update back to the board. So, um, we can put, um, I can put a, if you want me to put an agenda item on the July agenda for an update yeah, on no, that. You want me to do that? Good. That work for you can too. Okay. Any other questions for Dr. Kroll or anybody over that? And then I think we wanted Kent's, to, or yep. is there anything else, Dr. Kroll, that in regards to that? No, I don't think so. Kent's going to go through the, the budget information for you then. Yeah. Since you all have the paper, I'll just go ahead and work on this. If I need to put something up, I can share it. Um, so that, uh, if you want to get started, can you talk to you a little bit about the time frame that we're working on? Um, days of 28, so Wednesday or Thursday will be the last day of fiscal year. And at that time, uh, I'm sure when her staff start the roll, um, get ready for next year, and they'll be working diligently to close out the books and get us information that will be, uh, that we will present to you at the regular uh, July 13th meeting on how these budget um, numbers that we're going to show you tonight, how they actually end up for this year, how that will affect next year. So, um, so we're planning on the, the 13th um the regular board meeting either during the board meeting or in a work session typically it's been in a work session we would update you on on how our books actually or how the accounting actually ends up one of the big things is we budget um i think we budget about a million and a half dollars in unspent budget so we'll need to see where we end up there with unspent budget um see how our revenues actually come in compared to what we estimate our revenues to be. Those are the big things. Um, and at that time, we need to um, get clear direction from, from the board on how to present the notice of public hearing. Um, on July 26, you have a, a, a uh, work session scheduled, which we've uh, we will ask to also include a special board meeting, just like we had the special board meeting with this work session for the executive session. On July 26th, we will be asking you to approve the notice of public hearing. We'll try to get that, um, that budget book out to you, the whole book, uh, a few days before. Usually, um, we're able to get it out uh, on the like the Thursday before we meet. And typically we've met on a Tuesday, this year we met on, meet on a Monday, but we'll try to get that out to you a few days before. 
but um, you know, we, as far as the amount of taxes we plan to levy, the mill levy that we're asking for, those kind of things, we're going to go through that tonight. What our plan is, and we'll uh, confirm that on the 13th, and then we'll present the notice of public hearing. At that time, it is a special meeting, so we'll ask you to actually approve the notice of public hearing. That gives us time to get it in the newspaper, have it published, and then hold our uh, public hearing at the August 10th regular meeting. So that's the timeline. Um, one other thing that's complicated a lot of um, a lot of community colleges or cities, counties this year is that legislation, what's been called, uh, most people refer to it as SB 13, where the county has to give us a revenue neutral rate and they've done that. And um, all, all the entities have been encouraged by the county clerk and by um, Kansas Department of um, Revenue to go ahead and hold revenue neutral rates just to protect themselves. Because what happens if, if the um, entities publish a budget in August and it's approved, and then in November, the valuation goes down, the entities could lo actually lose taxes. We're in a very unique situation this year because our revenue neutral rate is 17 mills. The proposal that we're giving you tonight is only for 16.1 mills. And because we are dropping our mill levy rate uh, by approximately, approximately the two mills that was the um, capital outlay, we're in very, we're not going to be affected by this. Our valuation would have to drop by 5% between now what we've been given this estimate from the county clerk to the final valuation. And typically the last four years, it's, it's always been under 1%. Um, so we think it's, it's not really prudent. You would have to go through, we the college would have to go through several hurdles to do that. You would have to have a special board meeting to approve a notice to publish it that we we're gonna go over the revenue neutral rate. And since we feel that it's, there's almost zero chance that we would go over the revenue neutral rate. We're not, we're advising the board to just not do that. And we'll just go through our normal process of holding a special meeting for the notice of public hearing and the public hearing. Otherwise you would have to have another hearing just for going over this revenue neutral rate. Now, next year we may need to do that if they don't change the legislation just to protect ourselves from the valuation decrease. So any, uh, I'll stop there for a minute. And if there's any comments or concerns. I don't see valuation decreasing at all. Oh no. In uh, fact, I see nothing but inflation this well, year. Well, here's, here's the thing. We have a valuation estimate now and it went up 6%. Uh, when I talked to the county clerk, she has uh, a list of potential uh, abatements that can happen after the estimate they gave us, but before the November final. So, um, so the valuation that I'm showing you here tonight, which is like 849 million, that probably will go down before November, but it's not going to go down nearly enough to put us in any jeopardy compared to that revenue neutral rate. So that's our timeline as we move forward. I think people generally might want to just be more interested in where you're coming up as far as the expenses. Where's that expense line going? You know, forget the mill levy rate just for a minute. What is that overall expense line going? Is it going up? Is it going down? Where's that going? The mill levy rate can sit over here for just a minute. Let's just figure out the last couple of years. Where is that line going? Is it going up? Is it going down? 
Well, we're going to show you the operating budget. Then when we uh, bring the information to you on the 13th at the regular board meeting, we will show you in the notice of public hearing um, proposed maximum expenditures. And it will be higher. And we typically raise that above. But we'll show you reconciliation of the uh, operating budget revenues to the uh, revenues that were, or excuse me, the expenditures to the revenue the expenditures that would be published. I think the question she's asking is maybe dollar figures. Like your previous, it was fourteen point oh, eight million. I'm sorry, I thought you said oh, it's okay. And then I'm used last to year it. went to fourteen point four million. You're suggesting we go to thirteen point seven. So yeah. like a seven hundred thousand dollar drop in impact. Right. If it's just related to expenses, I think I, think I need to share my screen for this so I can show you. Um, you know, the, what we publish on that certificate at the courthouse, that number. That's mm -hmm. in that taxes levy. Yes. Okay, I'm looking for you. that number so that I can show people, look, it's going down, hopefully, or at least it's going stable, something. That'll be part of the July, the, the meeting in July. We'll have that information. I think last month you mentioned that you were, you were looking at 13.7. Right. I put percent. it up on the screen here. Let me make this bigger. very good, Shelby. I don't remember names, but I can. <laughs> yeah, whoops, there it left. Very good, Shelby. Very yeah, there good. It is. You get the gold star. The there it is. Right, so if you can see that, um, get this out of the way on my screen. So in 2018, the amount of taxes we levied was 14,128. Then it went up in 2019 and stayed the same in 2020. Last year, at the direction of the board, we actually reduced the total taxes from by about half a million dollars, you can see there. And this year, with the uh, Capital outlay dropping off. Uh, we plan to reduce it uh, by about seven hundred thousand dollars in actual taxes levy. And I think it's important as you talk to your taxpayers and your friends, and you know, not to offend Doug as a school board member, but uh, you know, pay close attention to what happens with the cities and the school districts, um, and you know, and their mill levies, uh, and and what's going. Oh, sorry, we've got the mayor here too. Sorry. And you guys will be you know? totally surprised that I moved to lower it at some point. In that meeting, so. Oh, yeah. We'll be shocked, Shelby. <laughs> but this is because you're not here for that. Yeah. Touche. This was what you wanted to see. Then. Yes. Thank you. Sure. I'm sure we have that somewhere in my paperwork, don't we? Because if we don't, I'd like a copy of that. Yeah. I don't think what I got was is going to be legible. Yeah, let me. Um, I'll go ahead and send this to Laura and have her send this little uh, little table out to you in an email. That'd be great. Just so I can have something that I love historical data. Okay. So um, let me just touch on a few things going through here. Then uh, on page seven, you know, we're still estimating um, Finish the year at 142,000 credit hours and use 142 for next year. We'll update that um, for the current year um, before we give you the update on July 13th. The local taxes, I think we just went through that pretty well. The compensation, you know, we show here the 5%, which would be the, the raise. Um, that's again at this point that's not final and we just put that in the budget as a placeholder obviously we can't talk in open session or in the work session about uh, negotiations but that's what we put in the budget as a placeholder at this time and then the two percent cost to the college uh, we think that's going to go down but that's what we we expected when this document was put together at some point, I'm trying to be very careful. 
some point I'm probably going to ask you to find out what that 5% represents in dollar value. Oh yeah, uh, it's about 800,000. Well, it's in here. That would be 10%. Sorry, it is, it is 5% is 1,000,000. 1 million. Yes. I'm sorry, two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We have two and a half in here twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can look at that actually um, when we get there. So I think uh, just re I'll be real brief on this. On page nine, um, we show the changes from what we showed you uh, for the current year revenue in uh, May to what our estimate is right now. And again, these, this is gonna change when we show you again uh, two weeks from now at the regular board meeting when we've actually closed the books. But uh, in our analysis, uh, we think we were overestimating the online course fees by about $200,000. Um, the, um, so that goes down. We, uh, in our final uh, disbursements from the county, uh, our, our local taxes that we actually received this year did go up. And so that's the 259,000 that you see there. We just make estimates throughout the year based on percentage of collections in prior years uh, of the local taxes. So it's not unusual that our year end actual uh, doesn't agree with our estimate. So those are the changes in revenue for the current year. For next year's revenue on page 10, uh, we've been notified by KBOR that our uh, operating grant is actually going to go down. Uh, we're not really in agreement with this, but they are, they have the authority to interpret the disbursement of the, um, the allocation of state aid. And this is what they've come up with. Now, what is that based on, Kent? Well, it's based on a formula and it's, it's very complicated. Well, I'm, I'm figuring it's a formula, but is it like mainly students? It has square feet the component. The components uh, are certainly um, enrollment, in-state enrollments, but there are also factors built in there. Historically, um, what your out district students represent, how much of your um, enrollment is from vocational or technical programs. Extraordinary costs. Extraordinary costs. There, there's a number. Is, uh, it's very complicated for me, I'll just say that. Um, and then uh, uh, our Excel and CTE student and enrollment has decreased, so uh, we're estimating lower um, revenues there next year. Then on the expenditure side um, of page 11, this hasn't changed at all since we showed it to you in in March, actually, um, these were the um, updates. And um, so here's where we're showing the, on line one is a two and a half percent um, enrollment, or excuse me, uh, increase in raises. And then when we came back in with the March update, uh, we determined that that should be increased to 5%. So on line 27 is the other half of that and what we would add to the budget. Um, so again, uh, I'm not gonna go through these. It's the exact same thing we showed you in March and then we showed it to you again in May. Uh, if you have questions, certainly we would try to answer those. And then I would backtrack to page eight. And so this is a summary on the top where we think we'll end up in um, at this year. Um, our estimate is to end up um, actually considerably over the 10 and a half percent expenditures. This is where we're estimating the 
1.5 million of unspent budget. Uh, going in, looking at the lower section for next year, our uh, proposed operating budget does have, it is a deficit budget. You can see on line five, the revenues over actually under expenditures of 1.6 million. We're also planning on taking a million uh, additional and transferring it from the operating budget to the um, self-funded insurance reserve. So that's the uh, uh, entry on line six in the lower table. And with that being said, uh, if we would end up under this scenario, which is our best estimate at this time, we would end up uh, on line eight with unencumbered cash in the operating funds of $7.8 million. The, on line 10, that means at the end of next year, if this all played out exactly as our estimates are right now, we would still be over our targeted expenditures by $2.2 million. And, you know, I think one of the justification certainly in our mind and that is that right now we're looking at a deficit budget for next year so we still have work to do to get our budget back um, in balance uh, having said that though and dr crow may want to hop in here um, as we've looked historically we typically when we um, estimated at this time of the year that we're going to have a deficit balance deficit you know, deficit budget. By the time the year's over, we end up not having a deficit budget. Yeah. But, you know, these are our best estimates at this point in time. And again, it's because there's so many unknown factors. We don't know enrollment. We don't, you know, we don't have the, uh, we don't have um, state operating grant completely secured. We obviously don't know, you know, what the tax revenues are going to be. And so those, that's why we do those updates throughout the year is so that you can see how that changes throughout the year. But Kent's right, historically, when we show uh, at this point in time a, a deficit budget, by the time we get through the year and get to the end of the year, we, we typically always end up with uh, closer to a balanced budget uh, or, or more, end up with you know, more unspent um, money or more unencumbered cash than we uh, had anticipated. So it ends up going from negative to positive. So. I think one more thing before I kind of end up here is to talk about the ending on the encumbered cash balance. You know, in, in this particular iteration, we are showing that uh, potentially next year we will end up with unencumbered cash in the operating funds greater than this 10.5% um, of expenditure target. We had a lot of discussion about that in our VP meeting. Um, few points that the VPs um, wanted to make is, first of all, we think, um, you know, if you look at the deferred maintenance list, we still have about $6 million on the deferred maintenance list, and we don't have a plan for it at this point in time. So this is one way, historically, in a few years where we've had excess budget, we've been able to transfer some of that over. Um, the renovation of the uh, 5,000 building, we were able to transfer over about $4 million here in the last two years leading up to that, which really made that possible to keep our debt service down and not have our nearly as much money. So that's one of the key areas that we want to look at over the next year is, first of all, is, is the 10.5% a good amount? amount because a lot of colleges have a lot more unencumbered cash carryover than 10 and a half percent. And so that's one issue. And then the other issue is what should we be looking at for deferred maintenance or potential capital outlay in the future? So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there before Shelly, excuse me, Shelby. Start to ask a question. Shelby wants to take all that money. I don't, I don't want to give it back yet. Kent, uh, <laughs> The, this is where if we I know we voted to not buy down the wind and hail insurance at the last meeting 
if we wanted to start to set aside some money for, into a designated account, this is money that could be used for that to try to help protect us if that indeed happened. That's correct. That is. Okay. We also yeah. talked in DPs about um, you know uh, having the board consider um, on an annual basis setting aside a certain percentage of the. Um, you know, the unencumbered cash balance that would go very specifically into a designated fund to address deferred maintenance. We talked about that. Um, you know, we talked about some of those different options for, um, you know, strategically how, how we can continue to fund and address some of the needs that we have because stimulus funds aren't going to, you know, cover all of that. And we're going to continue to have deferred maintenance. I mean, this list that's got $10.5 million on it is not everything, believe me. I have a question. Is that uh, special equipment funding, or how do you? What is the minimum required setback of funds that you have? There's, there's no statutory. Um, you don't have any. You you have no minimum reserve. That's not good. Yeah, it's the five point six million dollars. Well, that's, we have a target that the board has set in the past. Yeah, so that's percent. like that's on on is. page eight okay, at that's the bottom. What I'm where it says ten and a half percent of expenditures on line nine. It's just not legislative. Though. Yeah, it's not it's legislative. It's a it's board control. Right. I had a question on the top column. Uh, okay. Ending on un unencumbered cash, we had ten point four million, and our ten point five percent is the five point two that we're holding on to. What are we doing with the excess five million dollars? Does that go back into the general fund? It stays in the general fund and becomes the. Beginning balance, so you're looking at the um, line nine, I guess. Seven, line seven and nine, seven, eight, nine. And that top. Yeah, and the and the on page eight, the top section, that's the current year, and line seven there, ending unencumbered cash of ten point four million. That comes down and becomes beginning unencumbered cash for um, next year. It's part of line 10, correct? Right. It is. Well, it's it goes from line seven up above to line seven down below. We added a line in there. That's why it's line seven is the beginning unencumbered cash for next year. So each year, the ending unencumbered cash becomes a beginning unencumbered cash for the subsequent year. But you'll see you'll see in the mix of that if you look at that bottom table then that's that's partly what's going to um, help us cover the um, health insurance the million dollars that's going to come out uh, to cover the health insurance the designated that's why we're negative on revenues under over expenditures because we're spending a certain amount of that extra five million on well what 1.6 deficit there means our revenues next year what we're estimating for revenues is less than what we're asking the actual budget to be what so even with the anticipated unspent budget we're anticipating that our expenditure budget next year will exceed our revenues that's why and this this happens periodically um, that we have it um, and so what we do is use part of the unencumbered cash then to allow it to drop down so our budget that we're going to, the operating budget that we're going to recommend to you next year or for the FY22 says we're going to start with 10 million 438. But we're going to transfer out a million of that. And we think at this point that we're going to have a, a, a deficit budget of 1.6. So we'll only end up a year from now with 7.8 million, but we'll still be above the target. projecting last year's budget was 50 million next year's budget's 53 and a half see well right i'm sorry for the, the expenditure yeah. budget on line two Kim. yeah actually the expenditure budget um is the 53.454 on line two that's what we'll ask you to approve then we estimate that it will um We'll have unspent budget of 
1.69 million. So we'll actually only spend a, a 52 million 385. If that makes sense to you. Okay. I got a question. I see the on page 11, um, line one. I see that amount, and then I see another two and a half percent on line 27. Mm -hmm. Where is the additional 800,000? It's coming out of it's coming out of the you mean for the uh, no, recognition but awards. it has it's to be here it's, it's here. has on to the, be part it's of on, this. The, on on page 11 it's line one and line 27. okay That's are you talking about the recognition raise, awards? The yes recognition it's coming is. out of the stimulus funding so it's now the not raise part is of built this into the operating budget. yeah okay so how does that get disclosed disclosed to the public what 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 part we're just closing that it. additional it's in, this, it's just in this document right here. When we pre, when we um, well, present, it's not in a line item. No, well, um, she's talking about how do we account for the CARES money publicly? The uh, yes, the rec I'm sorry, it's okay. The I obviously award. have, I, I mean, it sounds like when I talk, apparently. No, you were quite only you were Shelby quite, understands anything. Well, I think everybody I everybody understood understand. you except me. I was focused on the ra the raises, it's and okay. you're asking me about the one time payment, so I apologize. No, it's okay. I just trying so to figure out will, where that goes. When we give you the budget recommendation on um, July 13th, after we close the book, we'll put together a little booklet. We gave you one last year, mm -hmm. and it will have these type of documents within that book. And we will specifically show you again what we're showing on on page. Um, it's where we show the spending plan for the HERF money. Well, that was which is on page six, and so it will be in that document that we give you, and that will be a public document. The the other thing is is that that for the. Um, the recognition awards that go to the faculty that go uh, through the negotiated agreement, that'll be part of uh, the motion. It'll be part of the, be part of the. We were settled, it'll be. Yeah, and we settled, it'll be part of that negotiated package. Um, the awards that would be applied then to the rest of the employees would have to, would come to the board for approval of that expenditure as well. So it'd be a, it'd be a board action item, so. If you, you know, separately or all together, that would be all together on the budget, would they not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. When you, when you approve the budget, you'll approve the total amount. Um, One total. The, yeah, and then that would include be, both. At some point when we, if we give raises next year, you will approve a motion later or separately from the budget that would show the any kind of compensation increases that will be the uh, motion of its own so are um, the recognition awards part of negotiations they yes. have to be for faculty because it's a compensation item for the other employees we don't we don't negotiate right. with the other, with the rest of the employees it's only for the faculty because of the compensation item for, but it's for, for it's for everyone, correct? We would like to apply a recognition award to everyone because everyone was impacted by COVID. Correct. Yes, you correct. would have to two do separate, 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 separate for faculty voted on separately. and for staff. There would be yeah. two but motions. Those two separate numbers. It, yeah. Just makes you run it. Bang your head on the. <laughs> Uh, try to get to a clear answer. So do you understand, what, other, do you understand yeah. what, what what it'll look like? Do you understand what Yeah, I just means? want absolute transparency in where that money is going because Well, we is, have to, Julie, because we have to report a, all of it. That is a significant amount of money when you add the three of them together. It is. And it'll all be there. Um, I think one of the things from the conversation is you kind of have to know where to look sometimes to see it. Yeah. You're right. I do. And, you know, and sometimes when I ask for information, I don't couch it properly. Apparently, I don't exactly ask for <clears throat> things that you academics recognize because I only know one verbal 
method and you know another and they're not even the same language. We'll have to try to, to make sure on the same page. Yes, but I, I am trying to get that information that I talked about earlier. Google Translate. I could do that, but I wonder if they have academic versus. Is there stuff. is there any is other there questions for Kent the over the yes. over the budget update to speak of? Four minutes. Um, the question a bit satisfactorily addressed. I'll let you I think he has R7, Mr. Long. Can I pass that out? Yep. Julie asked the last time about we uh, insurance stuff. That's the art that's covered. Uh, you, I think you asked at the last meeting about that, Julie. Um, and um, these identify the buildings where the art pieces are. This is all art that was funded through donations or grants to the foundation. So it's all. And this is, these are the pieces that are covered by our insurance. So I, I did have a question for Kent real quick. Are we required by law to have this line item of what we're budgeting for raises? Like we've had it here for several months now. It's not a great negotiating tactic. We just, just say, is that required to just so we have it in our books or you can be more fluid with that? It's twice. It's on there twice. We're what we're trying to do is let you know what the changes are in our expenditure budget from one year to the next. No, I get it. I'm just saying if you're negotiating raises with people, that's it's not very this is just a place it's not held close to the vest. That's what we're thinking of giving you guys. No, this well, is but a, we if put it's it in not as a in there and they there. come to us in July and say, oh, by the way, we've been telling you this, situation. but now we want to raise I'm, it by 1.6 million. million. Yeah, you know, and, and <laughs> the faculty does, they don't really like us doing it either because sometimes we put in an amount that's less than they think they're. Right, right, right. Uh, Maybe I'll start I would, with zero. I would have been in the future if that was blank. Well, and as we start, as we start, that's happened before. But as we start negotiations and you know start that process and try and do it in good faith uh, oh, and work together, we want to put something in there so that we, so when we're looking at our budget, we're looking at budget updates that we don't forget what that dollar amount might be. So that's part of the reasoning behind it as well. I do have a. So I think. Dr. Crow, we wanted to talk a little bit about oh, the, uh, we want to try to get some, we kind of had a consensus back in March on what we wanted to do as far as the 9100 building. Yeah. Um, we um, revisited the, that, the real estate um, presentation. Just, this, you guys can't just, really do this if you've already announced a special meeting to be about one thing or another. This We're is a work session. We're just trying, session. this is not something that requires action. No. I just need, We're I just need to let some, her know what we want her to do so action. she can communicate with these people. I understand, but well, I think that'd be more careful. So, We're working. Oh, it's it's work. What's that? <laughs> so if, <laughs> if we, what do we want to do? I mean, we, we started down that road initially and then we, backtracked and changed direction and so we need to be able to give the administration some direction on what we want to do there and the, we it's taken probably two or three months now to try to get where we're at and so how do we as a board want to proceed i i need to tell both john and jeremy tomorrow what we're doing if you want this as a board uh you know a specific board action item in july or more discussion we can do that but one way or the other, I have to let them know because they've been very patient waiting to find out. So I, I, I like just need some direction. I would like to go with Jeremy. Reason, keep it local. I was more impressed with this presentation. I did talk with Mark Sutton and he said the, uh, that location is, some of it is in the floodplain, which will affect the value of it. And that gives me concern that the lot empty lot across the street is just vacant forever so it's not oh. it's not a hot commodity to, to bulldoze and build something if it's but i'm not i'm not but, sure what they're asking for more so kind of along those lines with with what i at least what i understood initially was that john was going to do kind of a silent or a sealed bid where we weren't committed to Except selling it where with an auction or of course with listing it we could always say no i guess but that'd be great an auction, i don't like I mean, to commit but but that was part of the appeal uh, and yeah, that's a good and idea and so forth and i don't think that they, option was presented you let the potential buyers sort of set the range of what they think it's worth because who are you know different people looking at it are going to see different value and different purpose in it so true i don't 
I don't have a big desire to sell it, but I don't. I also ask for what, are, what does it cost to own it. We know that. What do you What do you want to do with it? Though? We don't want to be landlords. We'll have to pay taxes on it if we're not using it. Most likely. Do we, we pay taxes now? We're paying insurance on it. What's that? Education college doesn't take well, property taxes. Pay taxes. It, it will, I think no, we will not. if we start renting it. If it's used for anything other than our I mean, educational purposes, sure, then, that would be my assumption. then well, as landowners, we would pay taxes on it. Have we had any um, inquisitions about it? We haven't marketed it. Yeah. Nobody's asked about it. Not yet. I would have liked to have seen something done with it a long time ago. It's been sitting quite long. It's had classes in it until this summer. It's been sitting volume-wise. Right, but it was busy until COVID. Pretty, pretty small amount, hasn't Well, okay, my opinion is the only thing I've ever hesitated about letting that go is that it's proximity to what you're talking and if we're getting so many students out of Wichita, I kind of hate to build up anything further east in the county. Even though I love El Dorado and like to see things build up over here, um, I just think that, you know, we've already got a fire program over here. Maybe we need to put the criminal justice program over there. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I just wish we had a choice. I wish it wasn't already pre ordered. What do you mean pre ordered? What do you mean pre ordered? I wish it wasn't pre-decided. That's what we were going to do. We're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do that. It just well, so we're, we're we're talking about that. We oh, I understand. I understand. I just wish we'd have had some other option besides selling it. What would you like well, to do with it, Julie? Did you ever ask me before? I'm asking you now. Okay. Well, I what would, would you like, like to investigate it? other options besides selling it? Not granting it out, but maybe developing another program over there. If we want to grow a program and we want to keep feeding all these Central County students there. It sure would have been nice to keep that building, especially since it's right across the street from that huge new building we have over there. Across the street from what huge uh, new building? Well, it's really close. Okay, Eagles flight from the brand new. What is it? I mean, it's not very far away. So I'm saying, I actually attended several classes there with friends. So. So my, do we have my any two kind cents. of a consensus as far as you guys do, what do you we want. want to go with in terms of? I, I love the idea of keeping it local. I, my concern is it's not local because Jeremy's partnering with somebody from Wichita, which tells me that he didn't feel comfortable doing that by himself. So we're, we're into the Wichita market under, anyway. under either option. Right. And the tax value, I, I think on the tax rolls, they've got it about 900000 But I find the county tax valuations of buildings they don't collect taxes on. It's, it doesn't matter. I mean, to me, that's get, the appeal of the sealed bid process is to right. go through it. And, you know, yeah. and if we get a remarkable amount of money for it, then great. Offer, we just simply say, at least then we have some idea yeah, of what true. people were. I, I'll, well, I won't give you an example because it's private, but <laughs> I, I, could, I know of situations where there was sealed bid processes. And um, if it, it was would have been better had it been auctioned. But at least they had some idea of what right. the it was worth. But you said we could you can do a say reserve. No. You can do a yeah. reserve. <clears throat> yeah, that's my understanding. Um, if John, if I understood what yeah. we read and that which is back to what we talked about in February or March. Yeah, but so I'm in favor of pursuing the re-sticker with John and moving forward. With the sale, yeah. right? With the sale. Is that something that we can comfortably have the administration move forward without having to worry about an action item? You guys want that as an action item in, in July, or it doesn't need to be. I mean, you you if had you started down that road that initially, but I don't want to go back through this again and say, well, we didn't get a chance to do this or that. That's right. it's not that this is something that the administration can move forward on without us voting on it. Is there any concern with her doing that? And I'll get a hold of Jeremy. About. Jeremy will be okay. I mean, you know. Yeah. And I think um, you had asked for the expenses, and I emailed you. Thirty-eight. Uh, can't. What were they? Thirty-eight thousand four hundred some dollars on the uh, ninety-one hundred building that included 
utilities, mowing, trash removal, um, insurance. That's the an, that's the annual cost of ownership. About three. I'm grand sorry. That's the annual cost of ownership for that building. Is that what that wait, number represents? Wait, I think those were the expenses. Well, can't help that. Somebody asked for expenses. Shelby, Shelby did. did. Oh, did you put it in the bot folder? In what folder? The bot folder. Lynn emailed it to Kent. We can. I can. We can okay, because it everything I asked for gets spread out to every trustee. Because that's well, that's because decided. that's because when typically hey, when topic. people ask for information, we need to share it with all the trustees. Okay, well then I want anything anyone asks. Yeah, for. I just want to know what it costs, even if it's he just sent setting an there, email to cost us three okay, grand a month. We'll get it. Oh, let's let's, go let's, let's you? save the three oh grand a month. Kids, if you I think to, actually if Shelby if asked. No, Shelby asked it Lance. To, yeah, I'll send it to Laura. Shelby asked Lance. Yeah, I just want to know. Kins will send that out to everybody um, and put it on SharePoint as well. So it's exciting. I don't know. Oh, well, we should check. Um, sure it's quit being so Juliet's going to be emailed out and Good. uploaded to SharePoint. Like to that. Um, so we've got it. Here I am. No, okay. We're we'll all going to sit here and stay. It'll be a yeah. yeah. You can no, get it out just send, it, send it out as soon as you can. We'd tomorrow. appreciate it. Mr. And Chair, good night, sir. Yep, yes. I think we're done. Thank Wait you all very if much. There was a motion. I'll second it. No, no, no motion. It's just a work session. Can I left anytime I wanted, huh? Oh, God. Correct. <laughs>